So welcome to my review of Starlink, The Battle for Atlas. This is a very ambitious shooting game by Ubisoft and is for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. And that is the version that I will be reviewing today. And I want to thank Ubisoft for sending over the starter kit. And what is included in the starter kit? Uh, the game itself, uh, the R-Wing, uh, Fox McCloud, an extra character, and two weapons right here up on top. Now, to begin with, there is so much to talk about with this game. This this review is not a tutorial on how to play every single subsection of the game. We'd be here for about an hour and a half. But I wanted to talk about some things where there's a lot of confusion about this game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to explain the usage of toys or how you don't need to use them as well. And so to begin with, what is all this toy implementation that, that is here? All right, so you can play the game, you can put it on your controller, you can put a ship on, you can put a character on, you can put different weapons on, and they will scan into your game. So if you're in the game and I take a weapon off, the weapon disappears. If I put the weapon this way, the weapon will shoot this way. If I put it backwards, the weapon will shoot backwards within the game. I can change the character out. I can take Fox McCloud out which I can do right here. There's Fox right there. I can take him out. I can swap in another character. I can put the R-Wing right back on top and we're ready to go. Now, everybody's like, oh my God, do I need all these ships to play the game? Because there's a bunch of different ships. There's also uh, an Xbox starter kit and there's also a PlayStation 4 starter kit that come with different ships. Uh, the Obviously the Star Fox one is exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. Do you need these on your controller? Okay, I think that Ubisoft is going for a few different demographics here. I think they're going for people that enjoy collecting toys and uh, for kids as well, the young of hearts, um, people who might want to collect all this stuff. There's a lot of people who, who enjoy Skylanders and Amiibos. And maybe they want to collect the, all these ships and put them on uh, their controllers and, and bring them in. And once you put a ship onto your controller and you bring it in, say you bore friends, they'll be in for about a week. You can bore them into your own system for about a week. Okay, here's the number one thing. What if I don't want the toys? What if I just want to play the game? Where, guess what? You can do that as well. You can just buy the game digitally and play the game and you don't need the toys at all. You don't need to do that at all. You can buy the stuff digitally if you want to. Here's the other thing. Oh, do I need to buy all these other weapons and stuff to progress through the game? No, you can just buy the basic set and that's all you need to finish the game. You don't need all these other weapons and other things. They're kind of fun though and you might want to bring them in. That's up to you. And that's where I'm trying to get this review across to you guys. This is a, a game for a lot of different people, uh, in the sense that it really is what you want it to be. Do you, do you want to collect every single ship? Do you want to, you know, upgrade all your stuff within the game? We're going to get into that. What is this game all about? What is this storyline to begin with? The storyline is you're in the Atlas star system. There's a bunch of rebels fighting against some aliens called Legion, and you're brought into it. I'm just going to talk about the game on all platforms because this is the basic story for all platforms. Uh, your rebels are fighting against these aliens and at any time you can go to different planets and there's different levels for the planets. Some are easy to go to, some are difficult, some you need to level up for. You can at any time warp to those planets and go to the planet, explore the planet, mine the planet. This game is very much, now wait for it, hold on, very much like No Man's Sky and Destiny and a space shooter all in one with a storyline it's there's a lot there's a lot to all of this there's a lot to all of this so you can mine the planets collect a whole bunch of different items uh, to enhance your ship and enhance observatories to unlock even more of the planets so your main characters no matter who you choose you can level them up through experience using different ships uh, throughout the game or you can also just level up your ship itself. So to do with the R-Wing, you can level up different weapons that you put on, so you can modify your weapons. You can also modify your ship as well, level that up. 
For completionists out there, there's a lot to do. There is a lot to do. In fact, it's quite overwhelming at times. And that's where we get into this game is a huge ambitious project by Ubisoft. I really see what they were trying to do here. Did they accomplish it? Is it fun to play? It is. It has a lot of highs and it has some lows as well. Let's talk about the graphics. The graphics on the Nintendo Switch version are have some highs and they have some lows. There were some times I was like, I cannot believe these graphics on the Nintendo Switch. And then other times I was a little disappointed with some of the graphical looks. I hear that the PlayStation 4 version and the Xbox version are probably the best looking graphical versions to play. But you've got to applaud Ubisoft with what they were able to do with the Switch version. I was kind of in awe, especially when I went to handheld mode. I was like, this is nothing short of incredible. But on the big TV when I was playing it, I was like, oh, that's quite good. That's quite good. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. But it's not only about that, it's about the gameplay. How is the gameplay? How is it controlling all the different ships? All the different ships control differently. All the weapons obviously are different. It controls really nice. I always felt it's completely in control. I was flying, you know, obviously I was using the R-Wing and I was just flying around the Fox and I was like, this feels like a Star Fox game. This is, this is a Star Fox game. Even though you have to understand, it's not. It's not a Star Fox game. Fox is a guest character that you can use in here and there is story elements just to do with Fox in the Nintendo Switch version. It feels really good, like just controlling, shooting with the R-Wing, doing barrel rolls feels really good. And exploring the planets and shooting enemies. Uh, you have long range weapons, you have short range weapons. There's a lot of different things. You have elemental weapons. So every uh, weapon has an element. That is also a huge part of doing combos in the game. So you'll be fighting a boss character and you'll have to hit it with fire and then you'll have to hit it with ice sequentially or you're not gonna take it down. So like ice weakness will come up and you hit it with that and then you can hit it with like fire weakness. You see what I'm saying? There's a, there's a whole bunch of other ones. There's like vortex in there and there's a, a lot of other sub uh, elements that you can use. So there's a lot going on with gameplay. It feels really good. At any time, you can take on a mission, go to another planet, you know, go all around that planet, explore. And I'm, t I'm telling you, there's a lot to explore with these planets. And especially warping from one planet to the next, it's this, this, yeah, you'll always get attacked by bandits or something. It's not like No Man's Sky when you're like, oh man, I wish there was something to do. There's always something to do and there's always something to shoot. And there's always a battle to get into. How is it? Is it fun? Yes, it is. I, I like the graphics. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it controls really well. It's so much fun changing your ship and adding new weapons on and adding new pilots and changing it all up. That is a lot of fun to do and, and to test different weapons on different enemies and things like that. Uh, the enemies themselves are really fun. The bosses are great. Sometimes you're going right into a ship and you're destroying all the turrets on the ship and uh, all the fighters around it. And then you go into the ship uh, to get loot. And it's you're always collecting loot. You're always upgrading. You're always unlocking things. It's one of those styles of games and there's a lot of gameplay here. I mean, I, I can't even imagine a person unlocking everything with every character, wanting to do everything. We're, we're talking like hundreds of hours, I, I would think, to do all of that, if you wanted to do that. And as you're fighting in space and you're dogfighting other enemies, it completely reminded me of Ace Combat mechanics completely. And that was a really great thing. So you're doing 360s, chasing after an enemy, shooting your missiles after them, or shooting them with lasers or a Gatling gun, whatever your weapon systems may be. And that's a lot of fun. There's always new missions to go on. You can always ask the Equinox, the main base, hey, where should I go? What should I do? They'll always put you on another mission. I like this, but there is some negatives to it as well. There is some things that don't keep it as high as I would have liked it to be. There's a lot of repetition with the game. There is a lot of repetition with the game. Doing the same style of missions, doing the same kind of mining, fighting the same kind of enemies, traversing to different planets, the same way using the warp, getting into combat uh, with uh, bandits taking you out of warp. That is very repetitious. Uh, so just know that going in. Also, the one thing that really kind of annoys me in this game, and I'm not talking about the Star Fox characters, when they're on the screen, I am in heaven. I'm in heaven when they're talking, love it. But all of the rest of the characters, as I'm flying through space or landing on planets, the characters are just popping on my screen, talking 
all the time and it's just in my face, in my face. And I'm just like, I just kind of want to go and do this mission without you explaining all this stuff. And a lot of it just kind of went over my head because you're trying to do a mission and they're talking about something else that's sometimes happening. And you're like, okay, that's cool. That's interesting. But like, uh, uh, that kind of was annoying <laughs> a little bit. How is the sound of music? The sound's really good. All the, the weapon sounds are great. The music is good. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, it just kind of fades into the background, the music. I just found it just kind of, it was kind of there. Uh, it was not offensive. It was not, you know, like, like in my face. It was just kind of like average. I thought, oh, okay, this is okay. Uh, the one bit of music that makes, makes this game worthwhile for me for the Nintendo Switch version was when I call, and you can do this, you can call your teammates in to help when your gauge is full and all the other Star Fox members will fly in and the music kicks in. And it is absolutely awesome. Star Fox, warm up on you. Falco here, I got you covered. Yeah, it's so much fun when all your characters are coming in there and that music's playing. I'm absolutely in love. And that is where I have a very hard time reviewing this game. I think as a space exploration game, you know, shoot 'em up, it's a lot of fun. I think there's some really big highs with it. Uh, some of the boss characters you fight are really, really great. Some of the missions you do are quite fun as well. There's a lot of repetition. Uh, I think that's one of the things that keeps it down a little bit. Uh, but the highlight of the game for the Nintendo Switch version is Using the R-Wing and being able to use Fox McCloud, it makes it seem as though it's a full-on Star Fox game. And realistically, there's no reason why it can't be. You're using Star Fox uh, and the R-Wing and you're flying all around the universe and it's fun. It's a really a lot of fun there. And the one thing this game desperately needed was online play. I was surprised that there was no online play in it. I thought that would have really elevated the game and to be able to play with your friends online, go and shoot things in space together would have been awesome. But to make up for that, there is a couch co-op mode. So me and my wife played, we both uh, picked a couple of R wings and went off and uh, had a really good time. The split screen works exceptionally well and I was really happy that they did include that. This game is very a, a very unusual recommendation. Are you into collecting toys? Do you want to collect all the toys? Are you interested in that aspect? Do you not care about the toys? Do you just want to do the shooting aspect? Do you care about using Star Fox? Do you not care about using Star Fox? Do you just want to play the basic game and say on the PS4 or on the Xbox? What version do you want? There's a lot of different options here, and I think that's why a lot of people were getting very, very confused about what to do. And do I need all the weapons in the game to play the whole game? No, you don't. You can just get the basic set and go through the game. I had some fun with this game. I really did. It's it's a very uh, like kind of averagey uh, kind of style of game. But when I threw Star Fox into it, it kind of elevated it a little bit more to me. I'm gonna give this an eight out of ten for the Star Fox for the Nintendo Switch version alone. I thought it brought it to a really fun level. There's a lot to do here, folks. So for anybody going into this game saying, well, wait, you know, is there all this stuff to do? Is there enough to do? There's too much to do. And that's a great thing. So I think anybody going in who wants to collect it, get all the ships, get all the characters, get all the weapons, you're gonna be in heaven for sure. For me, I enjoyed the game. I thought it was a, a moderate success for sure. So anyways, guys, until next time.